So you see the picture here. Uh, so this is the IQ curve um, in the society. So researchers have um, actually worked on um, um, intelligence quotients um, or intelligence in general uh, for a long time now. It started in uh, 1900s by US Army uh, and they made tests that would actually calculate uh, a person's intelligence. For example, many of you have take a NAT um, or a GAT um, or SATs if you want to study uh, abroad you have to sometimes do the IELTS and TOEFL these are all um, intelligence tests of the different nature some actually assess your verbal ability some actually assess your mathematical ability and then there's um, logical fallacies errors and things like this um, so all of these tests basically measure your um, intelligence in comparison to other people for example if there are 50 people in the class and you measure IQ of other people um, your IQ is exactly compared with everyone else in the class to tell you where you stand in the class and this is why we normally call it you know someone has come first someone has come second someone come third and so that is basically in comparison to everyone in the class um, I'm very against the grading system in general because I think it's, it's not very healthy that you know people are um, competing with each other for marks instead of learning things instead of uh, enjoying things uh, instead of being happy that you learn new things um, when they start competing with each other a healthy competition is good but you know furious uh, competition is really bad so if you look at the picture the average uh, iq for um, a human being is 100 um, so if you score 100 you would be uh, intelligent than 49 percent of people and you would be less intelligent than other 49% uh, people. So you're right in the middle. Uh, so as you go above, uh, if you score 115, you are one standard deviation. So it, the gap between, you know, you see these vertical lines. So the gap between these uh, two lines is called one standard deviation. So one standard deviation um, higher, you will be above average uh, with 115 score. Um, and if you are more intelligent and then you have uh, an IQ of 130 then you would have a superior intelligence now Einstein um, is said to actually have an IQ score of 160 and he fell in exceptionally gifted people and in the population of the world these people are only 0.13 percent now on the opposite side um, if you are one standard deviation lower than 100 it's 85 um, these are almost 34.1 percent people so on both sides of uh, 100, uh, one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below, most of the people fall here. 34.1% are less intelligent, uh, or let's say in uh, one standard deviation below 100 and one standard deviation above 100 is 34.1% people also. Now as you go lower, it's almost mentally retarded or people who do not learn um, things very quickly or it's almost impossible for them to learn things. Um, and that's a tragedy because many of these people actually um, are quite common. So one in um, ten people are uh, of um, this IQ or let's say below 85 also because it's very, very hard to train them. It's almost impossible to train them some in something that requires abstract thinking. So they can do the repetitive task, uh, but that doesn't end here. It requires a lot of other things. Uh, to make sure that they are um, safe. There's no possibly um, productive thing that they can do. Um, and this is why someone has to take care of them. And when designing policies, when making um, human rights uh, procedures, you need to make sure that you know these people are taken care of. And this is why we have uh, Islam, actually we have system of zakat and it goes to people like this. Uh, for whom it's really hard to you know, make their own living or they have disabilities or you know they're not simply intelligent enough now one of uh, the more interesting thing is um, that how these people actually um, live and what do they actually do um, in society so how it works is that this is another chart I can zoom in a little bit Uh, so you see above here is the IQ score at 70, 80, 90, you know, it's 10 um, points difference between all. So you look at the lowest people um, on this chart, you know, people who are between 70 and 80, you know, these uh, on the left side of these bars that fall into this range, 
and they tend to be janitors um, like cleaners um, people who clean um, streets um, or houses or classrooms um, and in different places they fall into this range uh, there's also machine operators uh, for example uh, if your um, bike tire got flat you know you go to get it punctured um, uh, if your car is not working so you take it to machine operators and they would probably uh, fall in this range and we also have truck drivers and uh, would fall in this range um, also a little portion of carpenters uh, metal craft workers uh, you also have uh, freight and material handlers for example if you go to station and you ask them to pick your bags um, or if you go to a hotel and if uh, someone wants, uh, wants to carry your um, luggage to your room these are these people who actually fall in this range uh, and then checkers and inspectors uh, like it's making sure that things are working fine um, in terms of uh, woodwork or plumbing or metal issues or electricity and things like this so, so you see all these jobs that do not require abstract thinking or high order thinking you know they fall between 70 to 80. now if you look in the middle range uh, let's say above 100 was the average um, IQ and above that if you look in this range um, you would normally find people uh, who would be policemen and detectives um, and in sales and draftsmen and surveyors service managers uh, you also have uh, clerical accountants and things like this now uh, all of in all of these professions who are the smartest people so the people who would actually go beyond 130. Now you remember in another picture I showed you 130 are the people who are actually gifted you know, in the superior intelligence in comparison to everywhere else. Uh, these are the same people. If you look at the profession that they have, uh, they were most likely, what are the smart, smartest professions by the way? Can anyone guess? All right, everyone, welcome back. Uh, so I was showing you the careers one and I asked you a question before the meeting um, who do you think are the smartest uh, people or who do you think have the highest uh, scores what professions um, are they normally found in all right good enough good answers um, so if you look um, between 120 and 130 uh, there are four professions that are actually list, uh, listed in that one is a scientist uh, very good uh, Mateen it was a good answer so the physicists, the mathematics, the mathematicians, and statistics, uh, statistics professors, um, they are the smartest people. Uh, and then we have legal uh, lawyers that are very successful, like uh, top class liar, lawyers. Um, and you could also say them liars, depending on what they do. Uh, but you know, they are generally uh, thought uh, to be and measured to be actually the smartest among people. And then we also have uh, college professors um, and university professors who actually uh, teach at university. Um, they're generally deemed to be uh, smart people. And uh, finally, the doctors. Um, these are some of the people um, who tend to be very intelligent because uh, the reason for that is that they deal a lot with abstract um, thinking. Uh, for example, if there are uh, issues that require you to think and not actually act. Um, one of the uh, other things, um, if I want to tell you the main difference uh, about how these two um, faculties differ from each other, abstract thinking and less abstract thinking, is that uh, people on the left side of this uh, spectrum, they do things uh, that, that can be done through action. So they do a lot of things that are repetitive. So for example, if you're a woodworker, you have to use your hands and actually make something out of that. So that's practical, tangible things. On this side, this is more like ideas. So the, these, this side is things and this side is ideas. And uh, generally one more thing that we know from personality difference that we're going to be talking about um, soon is that women in general, uh, they uh, are more interested in uh, people and men in general are more interested in things. So many of these things, uh, these jobs, men do that. For example, men are supposed to be, uh, or actually, um, evidence um, is clear for that men are more of plumbers and electricians and carpenters and construction workers and truck drivers on the other hand women are more into nursing um, and education 
uh, and medical professions um, and things like, like this. Uh, so it's more of a um, human side of the things or more of the things uh, side of things. So it's, uh, it's people versus um, things. Now, um, there's another distinction between um, these. Um, there are two kinds of intelligences. Now, one is uh, called the fluid intelligence, and other is called the crystal intelligence. Now, crystal intelligence uh, is something that you acquire over time. For example, now you're reading a psychology course. You probably had no idea about a lot of things that you studied in this course, and you did not know that before. So now that you have learned new things, uh, and afterwards, if you uh, intend to study more, um, then you can build upon the previous knowledge that you have. So you can use the concepts that you already know, and then you can build upon that, and you can learn more and more and more. And this continues until you are 70 years old. So research has shown that you know under 70 years old, you can increase your crystal intelligence by and uh, learning more facts and experiments and lessons um, and reading books and having um, a good experiences and having uh, friends um, who actually help you learn things um, that is uh, crystal intelligence and that's malleable so you know if you're in a good company if you're in a learning environment if you're in a positive uh, ambiance that and then this is going to uh, keep increasing but if you're in a, a place where uh, there is no use for this intelligence you're not encouraged to actually study more learn more uh, be practical um, and you're not rewarded for that then it's going to go backwards so you're going to keep forgetting things that you learn um, you're going to uh, not grow in the way that crystal intelligence uh, will be helpful um, based on your prior knowledge now, on the other side that's a fluid intelligence and that's something that comes from genetics so if you are born intelligent that's one thing but if you do not work on that that's another thing so if you do not work on that, that's uh, your crystal intelligence will not increase, but your fluid intelligence will remain the same because that's fixed. I mean that you cannot change something. I mean many uh, people believe that it, that is uh, it has a lot to do with your uh, parents. So there's a research that says that you know um, human beings' IQ is an average of their parents' IQ. So if your parents are both smarter, for example. Um, it, it tends to be that way that you know if parents are both um, professors or doctors or engineers you're more likely to be um, somewhat smart also or let's say an average of them but if both of your parents are plumbers or carpenters or if uh, unfortunately they have some kind of psychopathological disorder um, then your chances of getting that is quite a lot um, we studied in previous lecture also about biology and psychology and genotype and phenotype that um, a lot of diseases and disorders uh, and intelli intelligence abilities come from your parents also. So it's very important that, and I guess that's going to be helpful to you as children also. So if you, once you want to get married, make sure that you marry someone intelligent so that your kids um, become as intelligent also. Um, because out of all things um, in life, uh, intelligence is a thing, uh, especially fluid intel intelligence is something that does not, uh, that's not uh, malleable, so that's fixed, so it's going to remain the same. So make sure that you know um, you make a good choice when it's time. Also, um, your it starts to decrease in late 20s, so for example, if your fluid intelligence uh, is the way it is, then it, uh, it there's some evidence that you know it starts decreasing in 20s, you know, uh, and it goes forward until you're old enough and after that your crystallized intelligence also goes down now one more thing um, that's left uh, in this regard is uh, just because you're intelligent it does not actually mean that you're going to be successful in life unfortunately so just because you're intelligent it does not mean that you know it's going to be um, helpful uh, in every way you have to have a personality uh, temperament also that actually will help you sustain this intelligence and uh, work in a, in a manner in society that actually appreciates that so you all have done your uh, big five personality tests is there anyone who's left um just i say it's very uh, correct that you know uh, hard working is very important and how do you find that so one thing is iq um, and now you know the um, best match uh, careers for your IQ but there's one more thing and that's personality temperament 
Um, so these are these big five traits and the test that you have taken and you know your scores. So now you can, you know, uh, go back home and actually look at your scores, take an IQ test and then decide what career you want to choose. Um, but in general, even if you're um, an intelligent person, uh, you have to find out how your personality is. So if you're an extrovert and your score is low on extroversion, so you tend to be, you know, you like being on your own, you like being alone. I mean, it does not mean that you're not almost always alone. It's just like you tend to be a little bit more reserved and quiet um, and think about things on your own instead of, you know, talking to other people. So if you have a low score, you're more of a loner. And if you're a high scorer, you like to talk to other people. You like to be in the company of other people. Uh, on the same time, you t if you have low scores, you tend to be quiet, passive and reserved. On the extra virgin um, side, if you have a higher score, then you tend to be talkative, active, um, and affectionate. Uh, it's a very good point because actually there are people uh, who are ambivalent who are actually in the middle um, here somewhere. And they're quite rare because generally people, you know, it's a spectrum from zero to hundred. So it does not mean that, you know, you can, you can, you have to be zero or hundred. So it's somewhere in the between also, and everyone is somewhere in the between. But that is something that you have to decide on your own. Um, and then see how uh, you have to manage your life in a way that it does not um, interfere with your temperament. So for example, if you uh, tend to be introvert, you need to make sure that you have a very um, a nice and quiet working environment where you can actually focus. Um, you have uh, things um, that, um, that you need um, and then you're not bothered when you're working and they tend to be less of a multitaskers. Um, now again, uh, this is only one dimension of your personality. The other is agreeableness, how kind and uh, caring you are. Uh, and remember, there's nothing good and bad with both sides. Every side has its pros and cons. Um, so there's something good about one side and there are other things that you have to work upon. Um, so there's not, not there's no saying that you know one personality type is good and another personality type is bad. And it's the same with IQ also. Um, being intelligent does not actually mean that it's going to make your life uh, easier. Actually, there is an evidence that it, it, the more intelligent you are, the more harder your life is. And less intelligent you are, you're probably going to be making more money also, especially if you are disagreeable. So on agreeableness, uh, the low score means that you are suspicious of others. Um, you tend to find faults in other people's behaviors. Um, you can be ruthless and very uh, unkind to other people and you can be irritable. On the other spectrum, uh, other side of the spectrum, you can you are very trusting, um, you're lenient in your decisions, um, you easily cry on other people's uh, problems and misfortune and you generally have a good nature. Um, and again, it is a spectrum between zero to hundred, you can fall somewhere. So you have to decide on your own where you are. Now that you have done your tests, you actually know um, your scores. Uh, and then conscientiousness. This is probably the most important uh, feature um, in predicting life success. Uh, conscientious people, if you are very high scored, that means um, that you complete the work that has been assigned to you. Uh, you do not, you're not lazy and you do not forget the things that you have to do. You are punctual, you are disciplined, um, and you are dutiful, very well organized. On the other side, uh, side of the um, picture, um, these people tend to enjoy what it is today. Um, you know, you, they party before they work and they want to have fun, but then they forget the fact that you know they have to complete their work um, and their responsibilities. Uh, on the neuroticism side, um, that means that some people get easily worried. Um, they're very irritable, they can get um, angry, and they're very self-conscious. And if they're very agreeable, they can be sensitive also. Um, and women in general tend to be on the high score and men on left. Uh, but it's also good in a sense that, you know, it um, generally if you are, uh, you're more worried about your work, then you'll probably do something about that also if you have high score and conscientiousness. So it's generally not a bad thing um, that, you know, if you're a little bit neurotic about the perfection of your work. I mean, people in general um, who are perfectionists, who want to do the best kind of work, uh, they are a little bit more neurotic than the other ones. The other ones are more calm and even tempered and comfortable and unemotional. Um, they can be uh, considered as risk taking behavior takers. Um, they are generally very outgoing. Um, they want to explore things. Um, they do not, uh, uh, well, let's put it that way. They do not 
um, feel the danger unless it's there. So it's it can be considered both good and both bad. Because if you want to explore new things, you if you want to take um, your chances, that's a good thing. But if you want to be perfectionist and you know make sure your work is without faults, you might want to uh, be a little neurotic also. Now finally, uh, this is um, the domain which actually predicts uh, creativeness in people. So if your score and openness to experience is high, you're imaginative, you're creative, you're original, you're curious, you can be artist and musician and drama writer um, and painter um, and literature writer and novel writer, a poet. So these people who create new things, uh, who enjoy playing with ideas, um, who live in the world of what if, um, who are the round pegs in a square hole, then it's uh, it's something that uh, you, know, you need to worry about. Uh, that you know, if you are too high of a scorer, then you probably uh, miss on the opposite uh, side of the picture, which is that uh, you sometimes forget to be down to earth. Uh, simple and uncreative and conventional and uncurious so uh, you it's hard for you to accept the fact that life is the way it is you know you always think about what if you know things could be different what if you know we did something in this situation so there's always an opportunity on some uh, to create something new to change things for new I mean these kind of uh, people are considered uh, to make to bring beautiful and wonderful changes in life also you know the experiments can go wrong but these kind of people are the ones who actually uh, make sure that life goes smoothly without any problems and there are uh, no disruptive changes so we need both kind of people so if i put it this way that no side is good and no side is bad so both kind of these people actually make our world beautiful and creative and enjoyable and livable everyone has their own um, good strengths and everyone has um, their weaknesses so together we actually help each other and that's a very good question um, Asha, I mean, sportsman generally you have to be very extrovert for that because you have to go out and meet people and actually be physically very active um, if you want to be very competitive if you want to win so you have this competition oriented nature then you, you tend to be a little bit less agreeable also because in order for you to win uh, someone else has to lose and if you're okay with this outcome then you know you have to be a little bit agreeable also you need to be conscientious uh, conscientious individual also who complete the work that they are assigned to they train very hard they, they show up on uh, exercise and warm-ups on time and you know they learn new skills uh, finally, you have to be a little uh, less neurotic also because you want to explore a um, new way of doing things. Um, fitness uh, tips and tricks, uh, finding um, new uh, technologies and new equipment that would help you perform a little bit better. And you have to be um, a little uh, more open to experience also that you know you, you, sh you should be open to listen to other ideas and latest research around the world that would actually help you get further on uh, the performance skills. The top athletes actually uh, they're generally very conscientious um, in their work and conscientiousness is something that you actually need in every field. So if you start something and you do not complete it um, then you know it's not going to get you on the top. So if you want to be on top you have to be absolutely conscientious uh, and if the kind of your job uh, requires pe meeting with lo a lot of people and generally uh, enjoy being a leader and uh, having power and uh, uh, be competitive oriented, then you have to be extrovert also and somewhat little uh, agreeable also. Now, that's uh, what uh, is the relationship between the IQ and your personality. So only just because you're intelligent does not mean that it's going to predict a very happy life. Um, you have to be somewhat uh, high in conscientiousness also you have to be high a little bit in extroversion depending on what you want to do because you know if you're someone creative but you know you want to live alone and you work on your own then you might want to be an introvert for example a lot of researchers or scientists uh, and professors they work alone um, they think a lot about um, new theories and ideas and experiments and it does not require them to actually talk to other people except for email or um, conversations these days um, online so they can be a little bit on, uh, less on the extroversion side but uh, otherwise you know you if you're a scientist and you're more into a science, a scientific uh, data and things like this you have to be a little uh, less agreeable also in the way that you know you 
you have to be critical of all the results and what it actually means and you know be able to uh, evaluate um, things for factual information and do not uh, get carried away by emotions the women in general that's what the difference between uh, people are in general you know women in general tend to be more agreeable kind soft-hearted and lenient and they trust uh, other people in general and men on the other hand are more critical and irritable and suspicious I mean on average I'm talking it's not every woman is kind and not every man is uh, ruthless but on average this is how um, it's supposed to be okay now there's something else um, that I wanted you to talk about so if I show you the uh, video that I have for another video which is a little bit more detailed uh, that can actually show you the difference between different careers and uh, different issues um, that's a professor uh, called Dr. Jordan Peterson he's one of the most famous psychologists um, we know that he was working in the field of uh, personality um, and IQ so I've added a lecture on uh, the course page uh, where he talks about um, the IQ and I can show you his lecture so you can uh, see the lecture at home so here's the lecture with the IQ and the job market uh, so as an external uh, reading you can do that um, there's another book which is uh, very famous when it comes to IQ uh, and most of the research was done in the uh, US uh, but the book is called the bell curve it's one of the most controversial books um, when it comes to IQ so I can show you the book you can download it I have added the download link um, in the page so you can actually see the download page let me show you so that's the download page uh, I have also added uh, the link to the website so here's the book link here so you can click it you know um, go there and uh, fix it um, you can download it and it's by Charles Murray and Richard Ernstein it's one of the best books on the field of uh, Bell IQ and the bell curve which actually tells you the uh, differences between individual human beings the different race uh, it can be a little controversial uh, and some people think of it as a bit of a racist but you know it's based on uh, the data that we have for IQ at the moment uh, one other thing um, is that you know you can search for a good IQ test and you can uh, see for yourself what your IQ is for example if you search Google for free IQ test so you take one of those uh, free IQ tests and you know and see how you rank there I mean it's not a professional IQ test um, and that the name of this professional IQ test is called uh, vice R so here you can enter your birthday birth date and then you can start the test uh, let's put a random date here and you can just start doing the test so it says 20 questions it's almost uh, you know it can give you the rough idea of your intelligence level and then you can go back and actually you know uh, match your IQ with these professions and if you need any other help uh, about your careers I can do that there's one more thing is that on my website if you go to consulting and then there's a call uh, there a test called rise Tech career identification test so you go to that test and here's the test so what you can do is you can print out this PDF you can download that PDF and then you can mark the circle on things that you like to do for example it asks you I like to work on cars so if you like to work on cars uh, you can mark the circle fill the circle and once you're done with all the questions uh, you make a total so you make a total of uh, the fact that how many of this column that you mark and then you write the total of R here like for example if you your total for R is 5 so you write 5 here for 6 for I 8 for um, a 30 for S 24 for E and 20 for C so you'd write the total scores uh, you can also write your score individual scores here and the top three ones 
you can write here so for example the and your top score is unrealistic artistic and conventional so you write r a and c and but depending on what your test is um, so you look the definition of it for example r they are generally the people who are often good at mechanics and athletic jobs uh, a, a are generally artistic people c are more conventional people they would like to do banking data processing administration and accounting and things like this so this is a free test that I have uh, for people that would help you uh, identify the career that you want to do and follow the passion that you have in life. But that's something that uh, is uh, for you to actually um, see uh, what you want to do. Uh, so this is this kind of, this is your assignment, but this is ungraded, so that means that um, this is for only your self help. So you will not be graded for these assignments. Uh, but you know that's something that. Uh, you want you might want to do for yourself now are there any questions anyone does it does anyone have any question okay fair enough so uh, I'll leave you at that and just go and see these videos again um, see if you uh, if you want to read the book you can download the book for free and read that and then if any questions you can ask me I've also added a brief description of intelligent and quotient on the uh, intro introduction to psychological notes and also on my website uh, and I'll be posting the notes also and also be, uh, posted the, I'll also post the pictures that I've shown you today um, via slide share and I will post that in their whatsapp group so you can download we also studied about fluid and crystal IQ we also studied about careers um, uh, one more thing please ask your CR to maintain this excel file and uh, mark the attendance uh, because I will need that in the end Saad why are you troubled why are you troubled Saad Oh, I will post the audio for the lecture um, so you can actually listen to that but if you have any questions regarding assignment uh, let me know I can uh, explain it to you now uh, and also this is ungraded assignment that means it will not be added to your um, scores but then uh, that is for your personal use to find out your IQ and your personality type you have already done the test and then you can um, actually find out what you really want to do in life uh, wait in case I'll just post the link for the career test Madin you do not have to submit this assignment this is ungraded so it's not part of your examination that's for your personal use to find out the careers you want to uh, you might want to join in life and understand your own self better this is a psychology course um, I've also pasted um, the link for the page where you can actually find uh, the career test and for IQ test I can also paste if you want I guess I'm also pasting a free IQ test link so you can do that and uh, if there are any other questions please send it to me on whatsapp and that will be it today okay